Yeah. Go for it, baby. And you all gave me 400 questions. <laughs> so what I want to do, if it's okay, I'm going to leave the really hard ones. Leave us on this way. I got it. I know. Literally, they, they gave me 20 more questions. So what I thought I would do is start with the questions um, that were most pertinent to the county, and then uh, you know, work with Javier in areas that we can collaborate. Is that okay? All right. With everyone? All right. So um, one question I got asked is what, and, I, and I'm going to skip some, like I said, that I think they're the city, but I'll come back to them as we get to them. Is that all right with everybody? I want to be fair. Do you all remember the questions you asked? Yeah. Okay. So if I miss it, you'll say, Cindy? Okay, good. Um, what, do, what do you do when people park across your driveway on a regular basis? So first of all, no violence. I that. <laughs> and I kind of think I know who asked this question. Um, the, the, if, if someone is blocking your driveway and you are in an unincorporated area, call the sheriff. Only, and I didn't realize this, but only the sheriff, um, per state law, only sworn officers can unblock a driveway. If it is persistent and someone just keeps doing that to you, get their driver's license. If the sheriffs don't respond quickly enough, and if it happens in the city, I can say this also for Javier, give us the, um, the license plate number, the time of day that it happens, and we'll coordinate with the sheriff to make sure someone's out there to be preventative. So whoever asked that question, is that, is that okay? Do you have any more information? You're good? Yes, sir. I'd like to comment on that. Uh, a lot of the people that do this don't know about basic geometry. You actually have to start your turn before you get out into the street. There's an 18 inch uh, space that you have to leave. Her driveway happens to curve as she backs out. The, the young people speed down that street and you're, it, it, makes, it makes it hard. She's almost got to back fully into the street. And if she gets hit, it's going to be on her. It won't be on the guy that's breaking the law and speed. We live on Lindale. It, it, it happens. Does is that, that incorporated or unincorporated? Incorporated. Okay, so what I would say is let's make sure that we get your address to Javier and work out a time to talk to people. One other thing, I think you're right that people. People just do not think when they park. And it, especially, and I would just make this comment out, out loud to you all, because this is something we can do in our own neighborhoods, is when we see people parking very large automobiles right at corners where you can't see if you're in a car that's not taller. You know, we, at the city, um, we tried to, in fact, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what part of this passed, but we tried to um, create a rule that made it, that forced cars to pack park further back from corners for that exact reason. And then the other issue, as you know, and I can just say this as in terms of us being courteous to each other, we have a lot of people who are elderly or who are pushing strollers and getting too close makes it very, yes, pain makes it very unsafe for them. Cindy, you're right. Um, lately, we've been having a lot of cars that are parking right on the corner, right on top of the stop sign. Uh, they have no respect for or regards. I don't know if they don't. If there's no parking in the area, uh, I was going to suggest why can't we paint them red? Well, you, we can in some areas, but the other thing I would say is that the city, and I'll just again, I think mean, this happens. I wish you'd let you go first next time okay. because all the city questions got, and I'm like, can you let that see? Yes, no. But what I was going to say is that um, one other partnership that. We could do, and in the, in, the, in the county we can work with the sheriffs, but in the city we can work with parking control officers in very targeted areas. The thing I would say that we have done, we did this when I was on the city council, where we had uh, especially people parking in the streets on car sweep, I mean on street sweeping day, that what we did is we went and met with the neighbors, we did three rounds of meetings and they agreed almost unanimously to, to allow us, or actually to encourage the city to come out and do tickets. We did it one time. People did not do it again. So, you know, we might have to look at some coordination. I'm going to take one more question on this topic. This is a comment. 400. Yes. This is common. That's another problem. On garbage day, there's one lady in particular on the corner of, uh, of Florence and Landale. 
she'll put out her brush and so forth, the part right on top of it. There's no, and she's afraid of the people. Mm -hmm. who complains too much. She's afraid of physical violence. In order to put out our garbage, we have to, nobody wants to get into a fist fight or something like that. The uh, people just, we've had a report to other, other means. Uh, it's not, it's not fair that we should take it on ourselves. The garbage men chew it around. And so we've taken to keeping a space. The guard, uh, brush, uh, recyclables, and garbage. Uh, the city doesn't seem to care. I talked to some people so, in Mayfair the other day. I'm going to say this they one more give time. Me an answer. I'm on the county board of supervisors, and I and I do think I think it's important that Javier is here. But I'm going to go through the questions I can respond to for the county, and then I'll let Javier go. But again, I can't emphasize this enough. The parking control officers are great allies, even for things like that. And frankly, um, it's possible to coordinate with the. Um, the haulers, too, to do communications. I mean, so, to do some of the houses there are essentially boarding houses, and each resident might rent a room or, or two people to a room, and they each have, and they yeah. each have four, two or three cars for a for, uh, for person. How about, um, Cindy, would it be okay instead let's see who has questions here? Instead of doing a question yeah, here, I'm fine with that. I just want to be respectful. Of Any questions? Yes, I'll keep in theme with the parking. Is there a maximum amount of cards that one household can have at their address on a consistent yeah. basis? You know, I don't know the answer. No. How did you just come up? Yeah. No. Unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, there isn't. The only situation where there is, when they build new apartment complexes and so forth, those ones will regulate parking spaces. You know, because people are assigned. But in single family detached homes, there is no, I mean, yeah, there is no, I mean, someone can have 10 kids and each kid can have a car. And there's, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm going to switch topics here because it's something that I'm, I'm really concerned about is the crime is on the rise in this area. Okay. And uh, from home invasions to murder to hit and run to keeping toms. Uh, to normal theft on our porches. What can we do? What What are those things that we do? We think the graffiti is going to be at. Is Is the gang activity increasing in our area right now? Um. Well, I'm not going to sugarcoat. Yeah, it is. You know, I mean, it is. And I'll tell you. And you know, I mean, I I have no problem saying, like I've been saying the past three years. The decisions that the leadership of our city and council made uh, for political reasons, you know, put our health and safety in jeopardy. You know, the city did not have to go, I like to, I like to say jump off a cliff without a parachute on, on you know, their, their pension reform plan. Um, they, they didn't have to go that way. There were, there were, there were avenues and all the city employment uh, groups and unions were at the table wanting to, to, to come up with a solution that would be best for the city. And it would have saved cops, would have saved firefighters, would have kept these libraries open at least an extra day. It would, the, the, the um, Allen Rock Youth Center is no longer run by the city. You know, it's, it's under reuse. We'd still be running it. So it's, so, the best thing that I can say for you all, you know, as we go through this next year and we go through our budget cycles, um, it's important for you to go to council and say, you know what, this plan that you that, that you put forward, it's not working, you know. And I'll tell you, you've got company. You've got company because for the first time, the types of crimes that we're seeing that we we tend to see in in the more urban part of the city is happening on the fringes of our borders in Almaden, in Willow Glen, in the Rose Garden, you know, home and, um, um, people breaking into homes, you know, um, it's not that, yeah, I mean, that type of stuff is happening. Um, I will take it, you know, I will give a hand to our, our police department, you know, they've been able to go out and put more people 
in the, you know, more officers in the streets on a temporary basis because they with overtime. And as any human being, you know, there's only a certain amount we can go without starting to physically can't do it anymore. You know, so really the solution is, it's a multiple solutions. One is um, we need to get more hours to our libraries. We need community centers open. We need investment back into our neighborhoods with after school programs and so forth. We need to make a clear, clear uh, choice for, for, for our city to commit to go back to 1,400 police officers because at that point, and I'm sure all you will agree, we were able to be proactive in terms of controlling our communities and, and you know, um, getting to know folks and building those relationships where if you saw something that wasn't right, you'd be able to say, hey, Sergeant so-and-so, I saw this on Lindale Avenue. You might want to look into it, and they'd have time to look into it. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough situation, but this, you know, it, it, it happened because of the decisions that the leadership in our city, you know, led by the mayor um, and the council majority. I mean, that, that's what happened. And can I just can I just do a follow up to that? Um, especially because I, I do know where you two live. <laughs> yeah, um, but one thing that we can absolutely do um, with your neighborhood is we've got to do some education and reconnect people to their neighbors because there there are big issues. So let, so let me just say, Javier hit the biggest one, which is we we contribute money to where our priorities are as government, right? And part of what we have to rethink is, now that we're coming out of the recession, is how are we gonna prioritize resources? Now the reason the city of San Jose went from being the gang capital of the world, and you probably remember that, when we were the angel dust capital, we had a lot of problems, was we had a community, we, we did it in four ways. We had a community policing program, where we started to develop relationships with the officers, where they were much more proactive, had their windows down, got to know the neighbors. That was a very important, shift, right, that, that we had. Second of all, we funded after school programs, as Javier pointed out. So that's the second prong. And remember that the kids got, you know, we have a little spike in burglaries when they're, there's nothing for them to do and no place for them to be. And, and there, this has multiple good outcomes, right? One is that you have kids that are busy and they're being occupied, they're doing their homework, and they're in a safe place. They are safe, right? Even if they didn't do a look of homework, they're safe and they're not into mischief. The third thing is, is that the city of San Jose took an enormous leadership role, which was really kind of Tom McHenry, Susan Hammer, and that was under Tom McHenry, the whole Project Crackdown movement that under Susan became, you know, Project Blossom, and, and then and the Get Mayor's Gang Task Force. And what that really meant is where we saw hot spots, we brought the team in, and we worked on it as a community. Neighborhoods, the cops, of the schools, and we really collaborated. And, and those things are starting to come back, but that is something we should expect from all of our jurisdictions. Work together, you know, that, that's just gonna be critical. And then the last thing I would say is that we were, and have been, I think, doing a better job of educating people outside of one or two departments in the city and in the community about what, what when we're looking at graffiti, for example, and we're looking at property crimes, that we weren't looking at gang crime as the crime. We looked at broken windows, we looked at graffiti, and we, we got early on this. So that we know how to do it. The city of San Jose was successful before. My, my objective, representing those of you in the county pocket more as a city council member, but my objective relative to the county is to get the sheriffs engaged at a much deeper level and, um, and probation because a bunch of the police resources are embedded in the county the city, and the state. And I can assure you, we've had a lot of highway patrol presence. Ticket. <laughs> um, we have a, it was a fix-it ticket, but in any case, we have all these levels of government that are patrolling literally within yards of each other, and we just have to do a better job of coordinating. So that's the, that's the next step. Now, for your neighborhood, it is pulling those neighbors together, but, but in this big picture, I think it is, the county, the city, and you all holding us all accountable, and you know, irrespective of what we represent, to perform. That's where I think we're at. And one more thing that I want to add, you know, I see a number of our neighborhood leaders, Guadalupe from Makers in the back, Aloha from Sierras, 
right here. Juan from Lindale. Number of you run very, very sophisticated neighborhood associations where the key, the, the key uh, part of that is communication. You all have your own phone trees. You have your ability to get to folks. And when you see something that's not right in your neighborhood, you guys are talking to each other at the same time, communicating it to our offices. And it's it's the it's it's getting to know your neighbors again, you know. And and uh, a number of you've been doing this for ten plus years, right? Yeah. And and that and that works. But you know, uh, and that's what makes this gathering here so. Um, it's it's unique because when strong neighborhood initiatives went away, you guys stayed committed to wanting to to, to keep all of your neighbors um, connected, you know. And this is a great avenue to do it. All right. It, is that question for Cindy? Let's do one last question for Cindy. I, I, I want to make comments strictly a comment, and I raise my hand till now, and I like the first before. You know, right now, as we speak, we have little two, three, four-year-olds growing up to go to break into your, whatever you all those bad things you did, to become gang members. And to me, one day is so they don't get there, so you don't have 25 kids dropping out. If you're dropping out of high school here, how do you support yourself and maybe the kids you have to get into criminal activities and gangs and drugs? Readypartners.org goes into schools right now there. Sheriff, Sheriff, what is it on East Hill, right? Curator, Curator. Yeah. They are in Atlanta's elementary school. They're going now to uh, Cesar Chavez School and another one in the Elm Rock District. And I, I'm volunteering. And then when you go there, you have old people, you have young people in there reading with kids every day so they don't fall behind, so they can go and be something other than a gang member. And I think. The suppression, we need that, but we also need to make sure that. Uh, so, if anybody would like to volunteer, I know somebody, you know, talk, talk to me. All right. I, I, I thought if there's one more question for Cindy, and it looks like Trudy had it in the front. Oh, yes, um, there's an increased number of poor and disenfranchised in our area, and I think that's obvious to everyone. Mental health issues, um, in addition to the poverty and disenfranchisement. Can you tell us more in a, in a broader scope how you're getting outreach to those people to help them to, to improve their lives? So did you all hear Trudy's question? Okay. Okay. So, um, so this is an area where the county has done a lot of work, and I'm glad Dave's here because one of the areas that Dave has really championed has been school-linked services. And I'll let, Dave, I'll let you talk a little bit more about that because I know you're coming up next. Um, and which really connects a lot of our programming to the schools. But on a broader level, there's some very good news I think relative to health reform. And one thing I would say for all of you, if any of you do not have health insurance, I want to encourage you, you can go right to the computer and type in uh, Cover California and look at uh, what, you know, how, based on how much money you make, what, what kind of insurance is available to you. And I, I have to say it's very affordable, so I would just recommend that. The reason is many of those um, insurance products have mental health services to them. Just for you, just reminding me to, to talk about that. Now, at the county level, the county, I think, um, now that we're going into health reform, it's allowing us to get insurance money to be able to pay for more people to get services. And so, frankly, for the first time in a long time, um, we're going to be able to expand, I think, our mental health services. And the other thing that's happening at the county is the mental health services are being blended together um, with the drug and alcohol services. And for a very long time, drug and alcohol services were kind of in one area, and uh, mental health services were in another, and made a lot of people who had both issues. And so now, with the integration of that department, I think we're going to be able to not just provide um, more services, but a higher quality of service. And I think we'll start to see that. The issue that you're raising in terms of just seeing people in need, I think, also touches on homelessness. The county, um, before I got there, and again, I would just acknowledge Dave and my, my colleagues, invested money um, in a program called Destination Home. And the idea behind this, which is really smart, is taking the hardest to serve people who you see on the streets and getting them into homes. And the reason that's so important is somebody who is homeless, who has mental health issues, and who is ill, isn't going to get better without a home. It doesn't matter what kind of services we provide. And what, frankly, what we were doing was 
arresting people, putting them in mental health lockdown, or have, hosting them in the emergency room. And I think the average amount we spend a year or spend a year on these very chronically ill is pro approximately $65,000 a year to not be in a home. So we're changing our strategy and we're starting to invest in making sure that those folks get homes. I think we're a long way, honestly, Trudy, from really being ahead of it. But what I'm really excited about is that I think the Affordable Care Act has given us an opportunity to take a fresh look at our services, try to figure out with more money in the system, how can we provide more services, and then really target these hard to serve people that I think if we can get them off the street, it's going to begin the, the process of seeing, frankly, of having less people um, out who need services, but actually who need services. Now, I'm also the liaison to the mental health board. Um, as a new elected, I just got that position. I've met with them already. They are a very intense, change the world group. And so hopefully when I come back and report, I'll be able to tell you the plans for the next year. All right, thank you. Thanks. Okay. So there was a question about Story Road, Clayton to Capital Expressway. So what you're seeing right now is a rebuild of the road. And so they're, they're, they're blocking it off in sections so that they can do the deep work that they have to do. And then they will, they will do the whole cover on it and you'll get a new road from, from Capital Expressway to Clayton. That's phase one. And then phase two will be from Capital Expressway to King Road. And they'll do, they'll do the similar work. Uh, right there, so we'll get a whole new story road, and your you know your ride will be a lot more smooth um, than it is now and than it was before. And then the other, th there was another question about uh, I don't know if any of you uh, uh, noticed the Highland Street crosswalk. It's now a blinking light, more um, safe for pedestrians. So that one's now functioning. You know, we just finished that. This one is um, they're doing the finishing. Touches on that one. I really like that. And doesn't that come out really good? Mm -hmm. Really came out exactly. good. Um, so, the, so we're doing the final touches on that one, and we'll actually do a ceremony to open that one up, uh, and, and we'll we'll get that information out to you all. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. sir. The area where the Because this is actually going to take work from, from my office, which we're already doing, oh, yeah. the, the both supervisors' office as well. So to answer that, we're working on that right now. The, the problem is that the jurisdiction on this side of the road is the city. On the other side of the road is the county. But the city, the county, and the Eastside Union High School District have committed already uh, funding to, to put streetlights from Alum Rock, I believe, to the end of Pal or Palom Middle School, Palom Palom Middle School. Okay. on on both sides. So there's some there's some administrative stuff that we have to, to work on and get through that. But that's that's happening. Our DOT department is taking the lead and working with the the two jurisdictions. So, okay. Absolutely. That's a question. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. We all work together. One level or another. So. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, Bobby and I have been out here for code enforcement issues where both the city and the county need to be involved in community meetings up you know, around Fleming Avenue and places like that where there's you no know, uh, strictly speaking unincorporated areas but they're right next to incorporated. You know, so much of District 5 is that way. Um, before we get into you know the, the real issues and tough questions, I just want to tell you it was it was really great. Um, I see Johnny Lee here. It was it was great to be out in District Seven a couple of weeks ago and see that uh, uh, people like him are using this group as a model for trying to get something started over there in terms of, of uh, neighborhood organization. And uh, you know that's that's not that you you. You want an award for that um, being replicated somewhere else, but it's just great to see people, you know, giving of their time, being here and doing this. When I was elected, uh, before I was on the board of supervisors, I was the district eight city councilman for eight years and served as vice mayor for a couple of years. But when I was elected in 2001, there was one neighborhood association 
in, in the Evergreen District, 90,000 people. It was, um, and there was there was no District 8 Community Roundtable, which is sort of the equivalent of uh, District 5 United. When I left office, we had 27 neighborhood associations, and we had the roundtable. It originally operated as a sort of an adjunct or a offshoot of my office where I kind of managed it. Uh, but I wanted it to be independent so that it could call people on the carpet, kind of like you're doing tonight, ask them tough questions and not feel that the people were affiliated with a council office or a supervisor's office. Uh, and so we they adopted bylaws, and of course they've been been there ever since. But they've lost a lot, they've lost a lot over there in terms of neighborhood association involvement because because that hasn't been that hasn't been nurtured. It takes constant nurturing, cultivation, somebody moves away, they're leader in the community, you need someone else to take over. You guys know how that works. And so when I come into a room like this, and I think it before, of course, but when I come in, I'm always reminded of the commitment that all of you have to be here, to do this, to be leaders in your own right. And uh, I want to thank you for that. You, there were some specific questions formed by members of the community, as I understand it, that were sent over to me. I looked them over today. I didn't memorize all of them, and I didn't hear them my sheet of you know, answers, but uh, some of the issues were, for example, uh, what's happening with traffic safety on the key road um, between Toyota and Elm Rock? There are people who are very concerned about that and have been for years. And just so you know, that, that issue actually came up a long time ago uh, over at Little Presbyterian Church, which I think was a predecessor to this group, or many of you were there anyway. Uh, in a, a District 5 meeting, and we were asked to take a look at that. Not only take a look at it, but we sent folks out to trap. The speed limit there has actually been reduced. Enforcement has picked up. As Javier knows, that, that particular piece of road is, is kind of an anomaly because it's Highway 130, and all of Elm Rock used to be that. And then Mount Hamilton Road is a state highway as well. And so it's actually C, primarily CHP jurisdiction. Uh, so that's not a cop out, that's an excuse, you know, for the county or the city or anyone else not doing enforcement out there. The sheriff's department's more than happy to do enforcement and they have on that stretch and you know you see deputies' cars out here all the time. Um, but I would strongly suggest that that continues to be a big issue or any other areas along that stretch of road that concern all of you, um, that we should bring CHP out here. We should bring them out here, they're, they're happy to do that, I'm sure they met with your office. Commanders come right into my office and offer you know, his assistance with these kinds of neighborhood issues. And we're really one of the few areas of, of San Jose slash Santa Clara County that has that kind of need for traffic enforcement in the neighborhoods. You know, because that's really a neighborhood street, right, from CHP. Um, so that's what I know about it, um, but we can certainly facilitate getting them here with the highest people in command to help out with it. So we do that as an action item. Yeah, it's up to your, you got if I'm, I can make sure they're here for the next meeting, I'm 99% sure. I'll make sure, you know, the highest person available is here, the highest person up in the CHP. That's usually the commander or they have a regional director out here. Uh, we've had them as far east as Mount Hamilton Road at the fire station, I and mean, they'll come out with a group of eight people, they're very good about that, so they'd be happy to be here. I think that'd be good because they, they always see Kurt also, right? <coughs> Kurt is, it's a combination of county and city. Right. There's portions of it that are, that are oh yeah, it's, it's so. I see CHP sitting on Kurt, and that's where there are a lot of donuts going on. Right? You might okay. as well paint it white so they'll know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy right now, the circle donuts yeah. that are going around. On Kurt? On Kurt and Highland. Yeah, so Kurt is, it's, it's not state jurisdiction, it's either county, it's part county and part city. CHP can, I mean, any law enforcement officer, if they feel they need to intervene in something, they can. CHP can write a ticket on any street, anywhere. Okay. Yeah. 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 They're, they're in, and the deputy, we'll get deputies out. And the short answer is, uh, tomorrow morning, we'll call the sheriff's department, call the sheriff and the other sheriff, and we'll ask for stuff to enforce out there. And if you can give us your name before, you know, your contact information before I leave, it's helpful, because they'll want to ask you about trends. You've heard that before, you're probably from SJPD. It really helps them to know 
uh, not exact, but approximate times of the day. It's occurred at midnight on Thursdays and Fridays, or Fridays and Saturdays between 10 and 1. Just generalities like that helps them a yeah. lot, okay? And we'll get them on that. And, you know, if they need help back, if, if they have to cooperate with SGP or, or, or CHP, they'll do that. My guess is because CHP has a Hamilton Road, Upper Elm Rock, and a piece of the key, basically, that that's why you see the cars. And they probably park their ready for ports or something. That's my guess, uh, educated guess. So uh, what else came up? There was a great question about what can we do, and this is probably designed for everyone, in terms of uh, better, greater outreach to the Latino community out here. And um, you know, we, we're, we're certainly trying to do a lot. You know, my chief of staff is a Latina. She's She's bilingual, uh, and we have another person on staff part-time, Enrique Flores, who actually runs a program in the community for us, doing gang intervention work. He's on staff, but also bilingual. But, you know, it goes back to what I was saying before, that, that what will help us with outreach the most is to have key contacts in the community that can help us, and I call it key contact in the community, somebody who, who knows 10 people in their neighborhood, who can connect us with issues like traffic issues or any other kind of issues. Uh, because I think when you talk about Latino outreach or any outreach based on, on you know, ethnic basis or demographic basis, you know, race or anything else, what it really means to me is what are you doing to communicate with that segment of the community on the same basic issues that everyone else is concerned about? Because I don't think by and large the Latino community here has way different issues. It's it's just Oftentimes there may be a, a disconnect with, uh, you know, sort of pressing the right buttons to get the information to get things done at City Hall or County Government. We just we just want to be known in our office for for making those buttons really available. Somebody asked me a long time ago when I joined City Government. You know, I've been out here on the key roads and uh, went from a farming background to operating my family's business here, which included a shopping center and so forth. So I had an office and. And everything, you know, was good, but I was fighting City Hall a lot, like a lot of business people do, you know. It always seemed a struggle to get anything done. And people would ask me when I got there, what was the most surprising thing? And this applies to the county as well. The most surprising thing is the enormous amount of resources there that are available to all of you, even in these tough times, even in these tough times. So this question about how we connect people to that um, is really, really important. It's, it, it requires two-way dialogue constantly. So when he and I run for office, we, believe me, we figure out how to communicate with people. We, we knock on doors, we have conversations, we gather people together, and we just need your help to continue to do that all the time when we're in office. So really, this group itself is one really good way to do that. But individually, in terms of the neighborhoods that you're in, keep connecting us and reconnecting us with other neighborhoods. Another question was about code. What can you do about blighted properties? Uh, the city has an actual blight ordinance that's really kind of severe, in my opinion, but I was there when we adopted it. I think I voted for it. I mean, you, you can't even have a house that doesn't have you know, plantings in it, otherwise you can get written up by code enforcement. So if you, if you just decide to let your lawn go and weeds start to grow there, like sometimes people do, that's actually blighted under the city ordinance. And someone from code enforcement can come out and give you a compliance order and tell you, you know, fix that now within a week or 10 days and you're going to get fined. So if you have a neighbor in the community or something, you can't anonymously rat them out. Okay? You can do that and your name won't get out. The county doesn't have a blight ordinance like that and there's a reason for it because if you think about it, much of the county is still rural. Our county line goes all the way past Mount Hamilton to Stanislaw and to Alameda County through the mountains. It includes Gilroy, it includes San Martin, it includes Coyote Valley. So it's really hard to write a blight ordinance that says you can't have weeds, for example, when weeds are actually a natural phenomenon in ag property. So, I have, I keep calling the first name, <laughs> be a little more respectful. But we have had, I mentioned a meeting we had up on Fleming Avenue with some folks who were complaining, of, and, and justifiably so, about of an agricultural property that had once been okay, but started to become very blighted. Uh, ramshackle uh, horse stables that were 
you know, overrun, and, and just a number of problems in the neighboring, neighboring communities, which included some city residents, were complaining, but the property itself was in the county. So we had to get county court enforcement there, county health department there, county attorneys there, all kinds of county people there. And what the county will do, and I assure you on my cooperation with this, is, is go out, even though there's not a blight ordinance per se, they'll go out and check under every existing ordinance under current under county departments, is there something out of compliance there? And I'll tell you, very simple things fall into that, those categories where you can get some help. We had a neighbor, maybe might have been one of you, call a couple years ago because a tree had gone down and the neighbor's property where the tree was situated never moved it. You know, a month went by, six weeks went by, eight weeks went by. It was a pretty large tree, and little pieces of it were actually extending out, you know, into the right of way close to the road. What well, was enough of a hazard, enough of a danger, and it felt there was there was an ordinance that the county could point to and say, you know, you do that now, or you're out of compliance, or you're going to get fined. And, and they cleaned it up right away. So the short response is, if you've got issues like that, let us know. Give us a shot. My, my staff prides itself on trying Present to deliver results. Question, please. Okay. Question? Yeah. Okay. Question? I was just answering the ones that yes. were on the list that were given to so, Is there questions from the board? I can't hear you. Sorry. Did you have a question? Yes. Okay. Uh, you're talking about code enforcement. I have a big issue with code enforcement. They're complaining I call too much. <laughs> uh, I'm on Story and off on King Road, and uh, we have a legal duffy all the time, everywhere you get coffee for time. And uh, this time they have taken 10 to 11 days, and they usually tell me 3 to 7 days, so they're getting annoyed with me. Um, also with uh, Meek Pueblo uh, Shopping Center, uh, they have a legal dumping on their property, so court enforcement told me they can't do anything about it because it's on the business. So I called the uh, Pueblo uh, manager, and he says he's going to clean it up. He's going to pay two hundred dollars for somebody else's illegal dumping. So he's going to push it on the sidewalk or in the street. And I told him not to do that. I'll give you seventy-two hours to clean it up. But uh, to this day, it's already been eleven days. So he hasn't cleaned it up. Where is the dumping ha happening? Uh, in, on Lido. Oh, on Lido, and behind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I have photographs of that. Okay. Could you forward forward those to Joseph? And then we'll follow up on, on those. I and greatly appreciate of, it, but I do have a, um, just uh, uh, people are annoyed with me over there at the. Uh, yeah. yeah. So so I was gonna. So I've I've actually called um, code enforcement on that. To me, that that's absurd, because then what that's doing is, let's say in one neighborhood, and all the neighborhood leaders that are here, you're the ones. You're the ones that call in the code enforcement violations because everybody else they look to you as leaders or they're they're frightened, no, well, right? Well, exactly tell them who I am. Right, I'm right. Have so, have you right, 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 right. So, so if you can, yeah. So I've told them, you know, that's no, that's. And, and it's been from January 29th. So you said it would take six weeks, even if it took six months. It's been over eight months, 17 days. Yeah. So, so they told me, well, you know what, that's not really policy, you know, it's somebody must have told so, I can so, reinforce that that's happened. Yeah, so can you, when you make those phone calls, follow up with my office, we will follow up with them to make sure that they are... The reason are, I do it too is because you try to work with yeah, that absolutely. person, and you want a good stand for that person, and you know, I yeah, said, no, I'm going to your name, you can work with me. They did, but after eight months, they're annoyed with yeah. you. Well, yeah. 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 Yeah, and the reason why I'm saying call my office is because what every there's a million people in this city, ten council districts, one code enforcement officer per council well, like district. Said, you really do a good and job. so and we used to have multiple councils. I don't know how many code enforcement officers when you were on the council, but it was it was it was a lot. And so now we only have one and and, and perhaps, you know, with, with staff being Feeling overwhelmed, maybe they told you, you know what, you're calling too much, but that's no excuse. So, so call our office so we can follow up to make sure that 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 stuff has been picked up. And Thank that, you. Great that, that has tend to work for us. Yeah, well, Thank you. Let, let me make sure. Um, so, do we have any other county questions for Supervisor Cortese? I want to make sure that 
We're respectful of your time. No, thank you. And yeah, I have to give all the other side of the valley now for a meeting. I just want to say one last thing that pertains generally to that. If you, you know, this happens where either you see the frustration, so many efforts, or somebody gives you, you know, some lips and a bad time, always feel free to call one of our offices and let us run that complaint through for you. Uh, I mean, it's part, of the, it's part of the beauty of having an organization like this and having us come and get connected and know us more phone numbers, more emails, and say, that you're, and say that you're part of this group. It always helps. And it helps us if we pass that along to PD or sheriffs. They, they're not stupid. They know, you know, a member of a major neighborhood organization of that community uh, told us this is happening. That's all we say. We don't say your name. They told us this is happening. And we want a report back tomorrow. I know that's how he does business. We want a report back tomorrow and wonder what's going on. And it changes the game. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't have to be that way. I admit it. But I know that. And as a private citizen, I don't like it that way in my own neighborhood. But it's that way right now. So take advantage of our offices. Call them first. If it doesn't work, you know, you can't get through directly what you need at the city or the county, then call us. And we may also have other tools available, like that issue we were talking about, that she was talking about. That's probably a health department issue, too. Guess, yeah. who, guess who that is? County. County. So yep. we could double team on some of this stuff and can put some more pressure on people. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. For the time. Yes, actually I have two questions. Okay. The first one is you talk about the police response. Uh, we've been a little bit frustrated with the response of the police. Uh, it was an incident. I called myself 911 to report. It was eight kids, middle school kids from Lee Madison School, smoking marijuana in front of my house. So I called the police, uh, whoever asked me, and what they told me is unbelievable. They said, don't worry. Is something very normal in your neighborhood. <laughs> 911 told me that. 911 told me that. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, can I, what time was that at? I had it registered on my phone. Uh, I can give you the time, the date, and everything. Do you know, was it during school time? It was in the morning, okay, uh, around not 8 to 9 o'clock. Okay. And I know there was middle school kids because they have the uniforms. Okay, so here's a new, well, here's an old tool that we reinstated that you can, that, that you all can use. So our PD just reinstated the TABS program. Yes. And so we can get you a direct number to TAB so that you can communicate with them. And TABS is actually at Pal Stadium again. And that, and that, uh, I can they back yeah. Well, I'm sorry, what was the problem with that one? Nine to six TABS. That's what you call it. 926. Right. What was the problem with 911? Um, what was the issue with 911? I did. I made a call to 911 to report middle school kids smoking marijuana okay. in front of my house. The response they gave me it was, don't worry, it's very normal in your neighborhood. It's better what? Very normal, very normal in your neighborhood. You live right. on the inside. <laughs> this has become an issue, and we are on it. Because my name is Mike Sullivan. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we know you. We know the <laughs> As of last week, but I'm still finishing up the meetings because our current captain is on vacation. He was at the National Academy for the FBI, which is a big deal for 10 weeks. So I was just filming while he was gone. Well, he decided to take some time with his family, so I guess I'm still doing it. So, long and short, we're taking that very seriously. Yes. All up and down the Foothill Division, that is one of the biggest complaints we're getting. Now, I'm not going to make an excuse, but it's going to be an excuse. They are down. 40% in their staffing in the dispatch center. But it is no excuse to be rude or give them their comments or editorialize like they have them. That is not right. So I just had a conversation with them. They're new. <laughs> <laughs> I just had a long conversation with my deputy chief. He talked to the deputy chief in charge of dispatch. They are on it because we have two things the chief wants us to be good at right now because I'll back up for two seconds and I'm going to finish my comment. We've gone through a little issues with staffing. Everybody knows that. But we are not a sinking ship. We are not listing. We're not taking on water anymore. Larry Esquivel, our chief, is phenomenal. He wants us to move forward. That's the direction. Two things he wants us to be good at. 
gangs, which we have suppressed very well over the summer. We put our entire special operations division on gangs, including overtime patrol cars. That is our SWAT team, our VSET team, which is violent crime enforcement, our Metro team. We even had our traffic motor guys working gangs, okay? Because we didn't want that violence to be happening in your, in your communities. The good news is, violent crime is down 19%, which is huge for us, but it's climbing nationwide. Our property crimes has gone down 1%, but it's better than going up 10%. So we are trying to do that. The other thing is customer service. And I explained that to my deputy chief because it, what came back to me was the staffers. They said, okay, that's great. But we have staff, we all have staffing issues. Everybody, whether you're IBM or the Sounds like Police Department, it does not matter. This man and his city council are trying to fix that. And they are. We have 41 kids in the academy that graduate this Friday. We have 58 more going in the following uh, next month, early month. So we are working on that. Thanks to uh, uh, Councilman Campos. He's doing a lot of work for us behind the scenes, and he's doing a great job, and we're working together. Like I said, no one wants that, we're just trying to move forward. Okay? I'm not saying every cop is happy. Okay? But we are trying to move forward. So with that said, 911 is a big deal. When you call 311, Sometimes you have to wait two minutes. Sometimes you have to wait 25 minutes. You shouldn't get come get uh, greeted by a rude dispatcher. It will not be accepted. So I'll come get the time, because the, 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 let me slow down. The response from the Deputy Chief of Communications said, I want to know the times, I want to know the dates. And he'll go personally, that's a Deputy Chief of Police, personally will listen to that tape. Because he says he has. And sometimes folks aren't happy because of the answer we give. That's not being rude. Other times, flat out being rude. So I believe you when you tell me you that was, not that that was being rude, that's not the answer you wanted to hear. Oh, it happens, that's something normal. Oh, it's no. not. It is yeah. not. not. Okay, so I will personally look into that. If you, I think you said you have the time of the day, and we will fix that. Because you folks deserve that. Customer service, that's what Chief Escobar wants. It's very, very simple. If you have to wait, sometimes we've had to wait two to 20 to 30 hours for an officer to come to Are you gonna be happy? Of course not. So we have to be realize that. But you're not going to be happy. We can't come back with you. And actually, well, sorry. You know, call your councilman. They're working hard to figure this out. And that's not what you want to hear. So that's a big deal. Go ahead. I don't want to take over your meeting. Yeah. Uh, well, you had one more one? Yes. OK. Uh, the second answer they gave me, actually not to me, to one of my leaders, too, when the, he called in another occasion reporting the same like there he is in top of the bridge, permanent bridge, yeah. smoking marijuana. And they told him, because he was a guy, they told him, oh, that's very normal. Marijuana is now legal. Okay. Okay? Not and true. they say, no, it's not legal. Right. So there is kind of like questions. That, yeah, no, that's not the answer you want to hear. So, just you know, for the record, unless you have a cannabis card, marijuana is not legal no, it's yet. Not. So, I'm not saying it won't be legal soon. Especially when it's... Yeah. So we are on that. I literally just had a conversation two days ago. I just got the email response yesterday. So, I mean, that was a 24-hour turnaround from chief to chief, and we are working on it. Good. So I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but please, if you have a problem with the dispatcher, tell them I want to talk to your supervisor. Every 311 call, every 911 call is taped. They cannot lie and say, I didn't say that, or I didn't have that. It's just going to be very clear on the tape. Yeah. Okay? That's why I carry a tip for all the time. It's just, it goes both ways, right? It can protect the dispatcher. They can say, no, she wasn't rude. The person does not like the answer. Or, oh, yeah, she was rude. And then we'll start a complaint process with that dispatcher. Judge okay, so let's go ahead and finish questions for Councilmember Campos, and then no, we'll take over to shift to you. <laughs> no, no, you're next on the agenda. I don't know if this is a council thing or a city. 311 is city. city. So my suggestion is that you have a possibility when you are very busy, you, have, you can either hang on for the next 20 minutes or you can. There's some way you can push it to and leave your name and address whatever on the problem. So you don't have to hang on or never get this answer. Is there a possibility to put that in that system? I know AT&T and all those other people would say, you know, they can I can look into that and I'll write that down. The thing is, if you get frustrated with 311 you hang up and go, gosh, I should have hung up. Guess what? When you call back, you go right back to the problem. Right? Yeah. So start working on your emails, watch Oprah, whatever you're doing, but it just be prepared to wait a little bit on 311. But I would love to leave a message on 311, especially on 4th of July.
Okay, so now questions for Council Member Campos? So we're, um, I submitted that request for study to look at where the appropriate place to put a crosswalk. Yes. And so we're doing that. We are, if it's one of the last things I do, we're going to get a crosswalk there. I will, you know, I mean, that's because I, I drove that right mm -hmm. after you told me. I mean, and it is, I mean, it's probably a half mile between, between uh, stoplights. Right. And that's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. So we, so our Department of Transportation is doing the studies on that, so that you know, you know that's that's how government. I mean, what works. kind of study they have to do? The, I mean, engineering so studies. <laughs> so, so they, they study traffic patterns, you know, and so, so, so that's that's what we're doing. Okay. So, so just so that you get an idea, before we could do those those two pedestrian stuff, they had to do studies. Oh, okay. But look, we got them. So, so it's it's not, yeah. So we had to do it. So somebody has to get hit. I hope not. Well, there was I know on Silver Creek and um, Capitol there was a student that. Um, yeah, the student from yeah on his on his bike. And he he met him. Was he in the crosswalk? Yeah. He was riding his bicycle on the. Um, he yeah. Was, yes. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing too because the traffic is congested right there and um, so um, I know that they're, they've made kind of like on the same as on Tully that's a really there's a lot of congestion there right and I know that's another intersection because of the high school and right county it seems almost as if it kind of where the signals is there's too short of a scan to where the traffic gets congested with the pedestrians and with the students that would be um, walking in those intersections and those are some safety issues that I feel that um, also with bicyclists. Okay. So. No, we're, um, I, I don't I don't know what the final report on that accident uh, was. Um, you know, I could certainly go back and look and, and, and report back to you all. Um, I know that there was a lot of, like, there's the yeah. staff that said that even for driving for over 25 years to Evergreen Valley College, that there has been, you know, the, the planning, I guess, in those areas through um, also on the um, Yorgoena coming up from there, so. Yeah, so I, so I could, I, I could, yeah, we can do that. Why, why we do this? Why we do this for 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 Yula and her cross wide road? In St. Peter's, I saw that because I was swimming there because we don't have anything like St. Peter's. I might move there because of the pool. No. But <laughs> they had some issues, and I had to cross the street. Apart across the street, there was a policeman. When I came back, he said, "You should push the button." And it is a big yellow light for no for pedestrians. I know they have it down on bike. I saw schools have it or something. But I said, I don't know, I've never seen anything like that. So it would be great if something like this was a post-wide road, so if somebody wants to push the button to go across, we push the button and the cars have to stop because it's a big yellow light. Not the right. Yellow light. Right. right, right, yeah, like, like these ones here. Yeah, and, and believe me, I mean, those are, that, that's along the idea that, that, that I'm thinking, just because, I mean, white road, actually all the way down white road is like an expressway, but, you know, so, so we're, so we're, so we're, so we're yeah. So, um, you, you talked about construction or renovating, sorry, in pink, you mentioned what kind of in our bicycle is, what are happened now? So, um, bicycle lanes will go from, let's see, God, there, there are multiple connections, but the main bike route from, from, uh, from the east side will be, and, and this is the main bike route to get to the, to the Deerdown station, will be uh, to connect folks from Capital Expressway, because Capital Expressway, it, it is a bike 
uh, you know, it's, it's a bike thoroughfare. Uh, but you will be able to get off the Capitol Expressway at Ocala, and then turn up uh, Hopkins, and then Hopkins cross over, um, what's by the book away? Yeah. So cross over there, go over the pedestrian bridge, and then uh, I believe that will go on Sunset, continue down Sunset to connect to San Antonio, and then San Antonio all the way up to the downtown to get you to the Deerdon Station. So that's been funded. Yeah, that, that just got funded through BTA. Um, again, these funding cycles take time to, you know, for the funding to come through, uh, it to be bid out. Well, it needs to be engineered, you know, designed, bid out, and then ultimately done. Hopefully within, hopefully within the next 18 to 24 months, we can see something like that happen. Yeah, but that but that's been that's been um, funded along with that a stoplight at Adrian and Ocala will also uh, they're also going to install that. There's also a stoplight at Everglade and King Road that's going to get installed as well. Yeah, all of that for for traffic calming uh, measures. Now on on Story, um, they are they they are studying. Uh, and this has to do with the width of, of Story Road. Um, so they're studying whether or not we can put in bike lanes from Capitol Expressway to, uh, to King Road. Um, and the reason why they're studying that is because there's a portion of Story Road on, you know where the McDonald's is? Yes. So on the other side, there's residential. Yes. So uh, they're studying whether or not they have to remove the parking on the street in order to accommodate the uh, bike lanes. Because, because, because if they're not going to eliminate, uh, eliminate lanes, yeah, they, they, they're not going to eliminate lanes, the but... The palm trees, the palm trees could get out because they don't put... <laughs> 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 here, here we are on bike lanes and we're the palm trees. So just to tell you, I agree, you know, I'd rather have nice shade trees, but, you know, I mean, hopefully bike, at some point. But anyway, that's, that, that, that's, where, that's where that bike, the, the, so they're studying that as well. Okay, so the last yeah. question for Council Member Campos, and then we have Andres Quintero and San Jose Police Department on the agenda. Thank you. Uh, uh, local? Okay, this is just the uh, whole enforcement uh, Council Member. Uh, I remember that we met before, but this is, they have to, they still limit it, five calls for one person. For example, if Flora is the only person in her community that calls, if that won't make, you know, that doesn't, you know, uh, apply to it. They should allow more calls right. instead of just five calls. And plus, the other thing, too, you know, like she said, when you been calling, they have an attitude. You know, that, that's not an excuse, you know, that they have only one inspector for our, you know, right. outside. Right. You know, that's not an excuse, you know. Why, you know, I don't care how many, you know, uh, cases that they have, you know, we didn't create that, but don't, right. you know, answer us with an attitude right. that, you know, why you only allow it, you know, and, and that's it. You know, we right. deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, so again, as, as I answered to, to Gloria, as far as I know, that's not an ordinance where you're limited to five code enforcement calls um, per person. Um, because again, you might be the only person in your neighborhood that calls them in, you know, because the rest, the rest of your neighbors don't feel comfortable doing it. So if they're if they're doing that, then you know, let let me know if you know the name of the person that told you that. Let me know because that helps me point to who it is and say, look, you can't be telling our folks that you know stop. You can't be telling them to stop calling. That's not right. Yeah, because that's basically what they're telling you, right? They're telling you to stop calling. No. Yeah, so just, yeah. All right, thank you. One last one, one more thing, and then we're done. Go ahead. Actually, I want to praise uh, your support. Uh, there is a new program, it's called Downtown Streets Team. Yes. And right now it's on three neighborhoods Santi, Mayfair, and Terrace. And the program is working really great. Good. That's for problems like Gloria has with garbage, uh, with dumping, illegal dumping. They are really extremely good. And that's something I hope they can expand it to another neighborhood. Because the major is providing a great help.
So I just want to let you know that like, the program is really good. And you call them, report a mattress, a couch, anything dumping illegally on the streets, mm -hmm. not in less than 24 hours, they come and pick them up. Okay. All right. What's the name of the program? Yeah, okay. Downtown yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Councilman Department. Next, we have Andres Quintero with Supervisor Chavez's office to answer one of the questions that was posed to her. Yeah, um, so, uh, so one of the questions was, uh, well, two of the questions. Number five, so, uh, is the uh, what are you going to do to bring more trees? into uh, the unincorporated areas, I guess. I don't know if that person was specifically speaking to that area, but they were sending it to Supervisor Chavez. Well, uh, the county of Santa Clara has partnered with our city forest. The, <coughs> the county is uh, paying about $75,000 uh, for trees uh, that people aren't taking. So please go ahead. If you live in, 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 our, in, in the unincorporated areas, now they're expanding to any part of the county, uh, but we would like to, to for our pockets out here in Elm Rock and Burbank to take advantage of it. Uh, the number is 998-7337. That's 998-7337. As long as you agree to take care of it, they will provide you a tree. So please. Perfect. There we go. 998-7337. Oh, we'll uh, our city forest. 998-7337. You know what? Um, what was your experience? Yeah, they, um, they come out really quickly. They want to do like a site inspection to make sure they get space for or whatever. And then I think they do plantings on specific Saturdays of the month, and I don't know which one it is, but it's um, for free. Or free is the group. Is there a choice of free? Yes, there is a large collection. Application online on the website. Okay, so application online on the website. The county's paying for this. If you're in the unincorporated pocket, please take advantage of it. No one is always. So now that we're at trees and, and the trees affect sidewalks, <coughs> these guys will make sure to put in a tree that won't bust up the sidewalk. They're actually at that. But now let me get to the to the to our good things that is going on here. We got uh, uh, sidewalks for the unincorporated areas. Uh, remember, this is a one-time thing. Uh, if you're in the unincorporated area, you decided to live in a place that does not provide sidewalks, street lights, and that's just the, the way it is. The county is not in the business of running cities. You have to get annexed if you want city services and to run all the But nevertheless, uh, the District 2 office, for a while already, and uh, uh, one of the can attest to this, has been pushing sidewalks into our unincorporated areas. Uh, and uh, one of the one of the things here, one of the questions was, are we going to make it more safe? On Kurt, uh, we're going to make sure that you see these black spots right here. That's Kurt. Just use your imagination. There's uh, large sections of uh, of this area that don't have sidewalks at all, so the kids are having to resort to walk on the street. It's very unsafe. So the county, uh, one side is District Two, one side is District Two. So the county's going to go ahead and put in sidewalks. It's the same process as schools. The rest of these are uh, repairs and actual full sidewalks that are going to be placed in areas where they haven't had sidewalks. Uh, there's an investment of about $1.7 million that's going to be done. Um, because of the issue with the, the, the trees, messing up sidewalks and that sort of thing, there's been extra studies that have been done to make sure that uh, those repairs aren't done in vain. So, well, give me a second. What we're doing is uh, going ahead and validating everything. And then um, by February, the repairs should start. So after the evaluations are done, the bids are going to go out, uh, the contracts are going to be awarded. And so by February, it should start. By June, all of these things, should, uh, all these uh, repairs and actual sidewalks should be completed. Remember, this is a one time thing. So um, uh, make sure to get your sidewalk done. So, so you're talking about that's existing sidewalk that they came out in March. Some of them are existing sidewalks, um, like Claremont. Um, there's a bunch of streets that are that, that are already already have sidewalks, and so oh yes, and these are going to have the slope. So it's not going to be like new sidewalks because the county just wants to go ahead and have everything look. You know, we don't want to have different sidewalks than the old ones. What I'm saying, the existing sidewalks that are already there without the slope, they have good. Yeah, they're better than some of these. 
Oh, so there's a new model one. So there's, there's one to match with what's already there so that it won't stick out. So that, that's my update. Would you want to make sure you see the trees? And uh, got to come back back. I guess going to take a question while he comes back in. He's, uh, All right, Sam. Are they just going to grind it down? Or is that, that's all we're going to do? Can we replace it ourselves? Are you in un unincorporated? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I know that in the city, yeah. I've been told when I worked for the city that you could replace a sidewalk yourself as long as it was done, as yeah. long as it looked so semi-professional. That yeah. As long as it passed, the, the inspection would be all right. But I'll get back to you in the county. I, I'm not sure how it was that, that question. All right, right. thank you for Andre. Thank you, Andre. If there's any questions for Andre, it's not coming after the meeting. How's everybody doing? Good. So I already gave, thank you. I already gave my opening little steal about what the basically direct is to read games, customer service. Again, the 911, 311 is an issue. I just had a little butt hand to me a couple of days ago on the southeast side, and now it's happening again in the northeast side. So we know it's happening, we know it's real. We're going to look into it, I promise you that. And I can't wait to call them today and say, hey, it just happened again. So we're going to have to look into it and see how we can fix that. And a couple things we're doing new right now. We have a TABS program, Truant Abatement Burglary Suppression Unit. That was gone away when we had little staffing issues. Well, it's back now. We are, like I said, we're rebounding with kids in the academy, more kids going to the academy in October. And what TABS does, we put about six to eight officers out a day, generally be four on the east side with the sergeant. And they're looking for what? They're looking for truants, they're looking for kids. What we found is that kids that don't go to school don't do good things. They're causing they're doing burglaries, selling dope, smoking the dope on the freeway overpasses and all that things, all that such thing. So what we're doing is grab them and bring them back to school. And if they don't want to go back to school, then we're, they're going to go somewhere else. They're going to go to juvenile hall or take it back to their parents. And that has been very, very successful over the years as far as trying to crush the burglary problems in your neighborhood. The other thing is we're doing is, is uh, community resource officers or CSOs, community service officers. That's going to be huge because one of the big complaints we're getting is the wait time for property crimes. So what the community, the CSOs are going to do, and I, it's just a guess, it's a little guess. I think a lot of them are going to be academy graduates that haven't got a job yet, so they're going to be trained already because that's a stepping stone to become a police officer at other, other agencies. And what we're going to do is take these CSOs and they're going to go out, and we're not sure what the uniform's going to be yet, but we're going to have 20 of them, and they're going to go out, and they're going to come to your house, take fingerprints, and work on the crimes that, that a regular police officer doesn't normally have to sh show up to. So that's good. It's going to help with your response times and hopefully make you a little bit happier. Again, violent crime is down 19%. Property crime is down a little bit. Like I said, it's been soaring nationwide. So we're glad that these things flatlined have gone down. 1% is 1%. It's better than me coming here and saying, well, property crime is up 32%, because it's not. So we're doing everything we can. What I've been doing on the east side here, since I've been in charge of the Foothill Division, is if I'm aware of a problem that you're having, and we don't have the resources maybe to do it with the Patrol Division and Special Ops is tied up, I'll have officers come in early, stay late, on an overtime basis, and, and they'll refresh your problems. So it's worked out very well for us. So that's pretty much the spiel, you know, the direction of the police department and what our chief wants. And I just have, if you have any questions for me or any comments or any issues or concerns, yes. I had, um, because you know you're talking about SARB and truancy. I had actually, my son was um, getting to school late, and I contacted the school when I received the automated, uh, the automated um, call from the um, attendance office, and I asked that they get him detention, and they said that they didn't do that. They didn't want to give him. Saturday school or anything like that. Also called the police department, um, and I didn't feel that I had any support. And then they asked me what was I doing as a parent. Well, I was disciplining him at home, but um, I don't feel that that. As far as I talked to the principal, and they said it wasn't a discipline problem. I thought that it was. Some school districts, I can tell you, Campbell Union. Uh, Campbell Union High School District, they do this, and that's Lee High School, Westmont, Brandon, Delmar, 
and prospect. What they do is they work with the district, district attorney's office and they have a true abatement program. Basically, if your kid doesn't show up to school and they show, I'm not sure what the triggering point is, if it's 10 truancies, 10 unexcused absences, well, they actually, we cite them on a juvenile contact report and they have to go before the judge and they'll do community service and do all kinds of things. So you might want to check with your school district if they have that. What school is it? Eastside Union or is it? Eastside Union High School District. I did everything that because, not just that, but I thought for safety reasons, I need to know where my son's at. And if, he, if, if he was felt that, I felt that that was a discipline problem because that's disrespectful to his teacher, that's disruptive to the class. And as a parent, I need to know where my child is at because that, I felt that that was a liability too of the school because I'm tr entrusting that the school, that he's gonna be there where he's supposed to be. And as a parent, I'm trying to get him there to school and I, Right, and we can talk more offline, but another consideration okay. is drop them off at school. Well, don't let I, him walk to school, don't let him ride his bike, don't let him go with buddies. If mm -hmm. you have the means to do it, get him to school. And then if he leaves, then that's, guess what? That's the school problem. Mm -hmm. So put it on them, put the onus on them. Now, it's both your problems, it's not the, it's not the school's no, job to raise your children. No, that's not my... It's, it's not the school's job to raise your kid, it's no. not the okay. police department's job to raise your children. No, but that's we are right. here to help when we can. Thank you. Okay. What else you got? Yes. I just had a quick question to follow up on the community service officers. Can you talk a little bit about what they can do and what they can't do? That's a great question. What can the community service officers do and what they can't do? I gotta be completely honest. I'm not exactly positive because they just opened up the position and I'm not sure what the job specifications are, but I know in other cities like Campbell and Mountain View and other, other cities close by, they'll go to your house and they'll do um, that parking car that we can't get to. They'll, a tow a car, possibly, quite possibly. They'll write tickets for that, for those types of things. They'll come take those burglary reports that, you know, or any other property crime. You get mail stolen out of your mailbox, a package stolen off your porch. Those lower level crimes, which are very important to you, because I've been a victim of that, and it is no fun, trust me. They'll come you don't have to wait anywhere from two to four to six, I mean, think the record's 28 hours for an officer, a uniform officer to show up to your house, and we're trying to eliminate that. So Chief Esquivel, with the support of the City Council, came up with this, and that should help a ton. How many? How many? I think it's 20 or 21. Four, four million people? Yeah. Hey, wow. I think I'll help again. So go here during the day, so it'll be it'll definitely help response times. We're not asking so how many in our area? I'm sorry? How many in our area? Really? Four. You know, I'm not sure. Again, we're getting, these are questions that I don't know if they figured out how we're going to do it. But 20, I would figure there'd be five in Foothill. Five in Central, five in Western, and five in, uh, in what we call it, Southern. Southern. I'm sorry, just so we're clear, what, what can they not do? They can't, I mean, because a lot of people at a previous um, meeting here were asking about it and kind of concerned about, well, we see them, I mean, how would we know that they're not a regular police officer? That's a great, now that's, an, that's the best question tonight. Yeah. How do you know who they are? Okay, just know they will be in some sort of city marked vehicle. They will either have a badge or what is a cloth badge or a regular badge, they'll have a name tag, they'll have ID cards, they'll be well identified. So I think the best way to answer this question is go find out what the answers are and figure out more about it. And then I can talk to the gentleman in the back and send out, we can send out a mass email out to D5 United. I think that'd be the best way. Yes, you're going, and especially if, if you if we don't already have your email address, please add it because uh, the San Jose Police Department, Sandra Avila actually asked me to pass out the job opening so to distribute it to the community. So if you want to see what they're going to do, just read it, and if you want to apply, you can. Okay. Right. Great idea. Yes, ma'am. What is your relationship with the county sheriff? Our relationship? Your relationship? Oh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's, uh, whenever you have big agencies going, to, you always have that little rivalry, but there's, you got to understand that there's small pockets of SO in this, the sheriff's office in this area. They're more prevalent down south in Morgan Hill and those areas, so we don't interact a lot with them. We we'll interact with more with downtown because they have the transit control. Well, in this but, area, they are pretty prevalent. That's good. That's good. Right across. Right. The it's getting smaller and smaller. Yes, they have a small pocket here over the story of life. But it's, I think it's fine at the line level. I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure what the officers think, but I think it's got a lot better than over the years. I mean, they are, that's an organization that's growing. They have a lot of young blood coming into that organization. So so do your departments ever meet to discuss crimes oh, yes. that might be happening across the As far as talking about the crime, I don't 
I was an acting captain for 10 weeks. I didn't meet with any of those folks, their captains, uh, my counterparts. But I know we've worked a lot of cases together. We had a home invasion where five people fled in the neighborhood not too far from here. We got four of the five, and that was a big part of that. We were helping to set the perimeter and everything else, and we boxed them all in because of the joint operation. So we have no problems working with SO. That's good here because then our experience is with the line. The line, the line would go, that city, we don't know what's going on. You know, the restaurant here or the hit and run. Or that city, we, we yeah, that's county. And so we were, we were wondering if you collaborate or maybe we should have a sheriff deputy here next week. Right. Because what, what we're not going to do, if you call 911 and you're right on the border of San Jose and the SO pocket, I would hope. We're not going to sit there and say, sorry, you're in the wrong jurisdiction. Hopefully, we'll get units involved and we'll, we'll, when they all, the dust settles and we'll determine who's going to take the report, who's going to take the bag out of jail. But I can look into that also. So all right. I, call, we, I'm going wide. I live in such parts, I'm in the county, but I can see the, the city, right? So I have to call 911 and report something to the county, and then I have to call back and report to the, to the city because they, they don't talk. They don't want to talk to each other, and they don't want to work together to solve the issue. Unfortunately, what happens with that is you have two dispatch centers, and they used to be together. Right now, you have Communications Hill, you know, Central San Jose, and you have our dispatch center, brand new, which is like brand new, brand new a while ago, but downtown San Jose. So they're separate. So unfortunately, they can't just handle the phone to something like, here you go. So that's why they want you to talk to the right people and get the right resources. <laughs> Okay, last question uh, back here. In a hurry. Uh, she's been patient. Out of tape. <laughs> we, <laughs> no, we have one more gentleman, and, and we're almost out of time. Go ahead. What is the level of the cabinets? Anybody get moved from one spot and then pop up another, and then like Walmart and Okay, that is one of the hardest issues that any police department in the nation faces. That's the homelessness. We are not going to solve homelessness. I swear, if I can solve homelessness. I think the you know the, some peace prize or whatever, but I'm telling you, it's tough. What we find is we'll clean up in Cameron, this at Story Life, and I'll find the same people down here at Story King. It is we were we were like I used to say we were like the merry maids for the homeless. We clean up their things and they take all the stuff they want because we have to post, we have to tell them at least 72 hours in advance we're coming to clean up this site. What they do is they get all their stuff that's valuable to them, valuable to them. And they put it in their cart and they put it they hide it someplace. And we come up and clean up all their garbage, and as soon as we leave, and literally 20 cubic yards of garbage in some of these places, it's a full dump truck, they come right back in. Thank you for cleaning up my site, now you start all the cleanup. So, we work with the Santa Clara Valley Water District, and they're invaluable to us, because a lot of these are down in the creeks, not all of them, obviously, yes. you've seen some of these. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Go, yes, I okay. go, 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 okay. Okay. that's great. They've been, they've been awesome, and they actually provide the dump trucks for us. They provide the bags, the gloves, the safety equipment. We go down to the jail. The people who get arrested for DUIs or for suspended licenses or prostitution in these real low-level crimes, and they grab 40 PSP workers that they have to pick up paper on the weekend, and we bring them with us, and we'll clean it up. Now, with the budget cuts and everything, that the program, not because of the water district, but on our end, kind of got suspended. It's starting to come back now. So please call. That would I never want to say call your council person, but call your council person and just let them know, hey, we have this homeless and they'll get a hold of me, and that's the best way to buy a document. All right, so I, I'm sorry uh, we need to let Domingo Candelas from Senator Bell's office go up. So thank you everybody. Thank you to the police department for being here. Good evening everyone. Um, thank you. I'll be really brief. Um, I'm here today to announce a health fair and forum we're having May 19th, or October 19th, okay. October 19th at the Mayfair Community Center. Yay. So uh, we will have certified Covered California uh, specialists there because uh, with the Affordable Care Act implementation, it's going to be mandatory to have health coverage. So uh, it's going to be very important. We have free blood glucose screenings, free flu shots and uh, other free goodies, so uh, please show up, and uh, we, we will have a forum going on prior to the health, health fair, and uh, we have folks from uh, Council on Aging, Council on Aging, oh, which is now source-wide, so uh, we hope to see some of you there, and I'll have flyers here available at the front, and uh, thank you for your time. And we have work 